Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is a DNA computer exploit. To be honest, today's story isn't directly practical or relevant to most organizations, yet it conveys an important security message that I wanted to share. Let's start with the story itself. It comes from uh, researchers at a local university here in Seattle called the University of Washington. Basically, these researchers proved that you could synthesize a malicious DNA strand that would trigger a computer vulnerability. So let's break that down a little. Basically, geneticists nowadays have computing platforms platforms and software that can take DNA strands, break it down to the basic genes, I believe it's A, T, G, and C, and then parse that data to find patterns and things like that. Now, of course, they need software to read and parse that data. These researchers showed how a, a badly coded application could actually suffer from a vulnerability, and the researchers then created a DNA strand that could trigger that vulnerability and remotely execute code on that computer. So that resulted in a lot of sci-fi headlines about DNA strands that could be computer malware. Now really, at a high level, this is nothing new. What they were really showing was a vulnerability as old as time, something called a buffer overflow. Basically, any time a program takes user data or takes any data input, it has to store it in a buffer. And if it doesn't do a good job of sanitizing and validating the data it's taking in, it could overrun a buffer, and then smart hackers could leverage that in a way to land on a certain part of memory that allows you to execute execute code. You're basically pointing at the register that's going to be next executed. In any case, this is a simple buffer overflow, and most programmers know about this. The way to avoid this is to actually sanitize any inputs. That said, what's interesting about this vulnerability is definitely the mechanism with which they trigger it, actually synthesizing a DNA strand. And this is really kind of the blind spot in uh, maybe programmers' defensive coding. A a lot of programmers probably only think to sanitize user input, things that they know that some user is directly entering into their program. But there's lots of other ways for users or hackers to manipulate other data inputs, in this case a DNA strand. These particular researchers crafted a DNA strand which would be unexpected to the programmer. They may not think that a malicious hacker would go to that extent. Other examples of this are hard hardware-based buffer overflow vulnerabilities. For instance, we now have passports that have digital information, including our images in the passport. Now, if someone's designing a passport reader application, they might think it's a closed box system where the passport's always going to be the same, its input will always be identical because someone's going to be, you know, putting their password there. So they may not have to worry about sanitizing inputs because how can you change the data on a passport? Of of course, hackers know that this passport has a RFID chip or something like that that's conveying this information, and with some hardware hacking, they can actually put some modified information in, say, your passport image, something that a researcher showed in 2008. So really, what's novel about modern memory corruption attacks, whether they be buffer overflows or other things, is the delivery mechanism, is when hackers or researchers find interesting ways to deliver data to a program that maybe the programmer doesn't realize users or attackers can manipulate. In any case, that's exactly what this is an example of. If you have a program that parses DNA, modified DNA might be able to trigger a flaw. And with the increase in uh, the Internet of Things and technology we use every day that does things like scanning QR codes, uh, doing facial recognition, automatically reading our license plate as we go through speed cameras, as all this software exists, there are new input mechanisms for these type of memory corruption vulnerabilities. So the best thing this research conveys is developers always need to practice uh, their secure coding methods. Anytime they take an input, even if it's not directly a user input, they need to think about uh, validating uh, that input and sanitizing it as well. Now all that said, as interesting as this research was, it's, it's very cool to create a synthesized DNA strand that triggers a buffer overflow vulnerability. Do know it was somewhat theatrics. In order for this to work, the researchers actually had to add, purposely add a vulnerability to their software to trigger this vulnerability. 
vulnerability. Now they say, truthfully so, that a vulnerability like that has existed in software in the past and could exist, but realize that they're not actually finding a flaw in off-the-shelf software. They actually planted a flaw that they then leveraged themselves. Nonetheless, it's very interesting research. If you're interested in the technical details, check out their white paper. It was especially interesting to see how they actually were able to uh, pass shell code considering uh, the amount of data they could pass, you know, the letters for genes are pretty limited. Well, that's it for today's news. Thank you for watching.